an anti-energy or a... But he's really talking about negative energy and splitting the positives mm -hmm. and different potentials. Right. So you need it to get this far. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to give a little insight on this, and that's about what I wanted to do. Tesla switch if you go back and forth. This has been on my internet site forever that it flows this way and then it flows this way. So what's it actually doing? When you run current through here, uh, what's left over feeds the motor or the light bulb and the remainder goes in this battery as a charge. So this battery is always gaining. So now if I flip these, if I had some convenient switching, and I took this battery and moved it here, and moved this battery here, then this battery would be under charge. And if I did the same thing on the other side, it would, it would do the same thing. So... So those two center ones are in parallel? Yes. So... Let's get right to it. Why did everybody have so much trouble with a Tesla switch? And it's probably because they didn't understand the circuit. So we're going to call these 5 volts each. So here's your plus terminal. Here's your minus terminal. Then what you had was you had another battery. The same thing down here. 5 volts. Plus, minus. But the thing that you you didn't have with the other arrangement is what we did was we came in here and put a transistor in here. And everybody knows this is going to be backwards because the positive is on the collector if it's an NPN. And the emitter is going to go to the negative. So now if I have these batteries.
and I arrange the switches the same. And there are five volts each. Okay, so what is it that I need to do to make make the thing switch correctly? Well, you can't just take this side, turn it on, and dump it across this side because it would be open. You have, you have this transistor in the way right here. So, conveniently, what, what, what they did was they put a diode here, and they put a diode here, and the opposite this way of the negative terminals. And you tie them together. And now all of a sudden when you look at this, those this side is in parallel, so it's just five volts. But when this side turns on, it's ten volts. So what did we just say? We said if it didn't make any difference, if you put the meter in that line and you turn this switch on and this positive flows here what you have is you have a 5 volt differential here but it's negative it's in the negative end it's in the negative end so Let's take into account all of it. We're going to lose some voltage here, probably a volt. And when we put the next switch in, because we want to isolate these things, and this is, I think, where everybody's getting confused. Remember, we want to switch banks. We want to take the power. We just want to take the differential power from this circuit. And this is a very small value, but just to prove the point, we're going to use the small value. We're not asking for a lot of power here. We're just asking for the explanation of how the Tesla switch works. So... We know we're going to lose a volt here, we're going to lose a volt here, about that. And if you get real efficient devices, you're not going to lose too much. But we found out later on, you also needed a switch here. And see, notice now, this positive end can go to this collector, and this emitter end can, can go over here and feed the diode. See, so if I turn this switch on right now, what I have is I have about three volts here that I can use, that I can have, because the rest is feeding across. The battery is only going to take what it wants to take to charge. So I started out with 10. I got five there. I end up with three, and that's enough. When it runs through the load, you only have to be two volts over the batteries to charge them. So, now if I did the same thing on this side, and let's start over right here so we can get this clearly the way that we want to do this. If you notice, when this side turns on, that means this transistor turns on here, this transistor turns on here, so all of a sudden, there's 10 volts that's going to want to appear across this 5 volts. Well, if you go back to my original drawing, I showed you that on my internet site. I tried to explain all this to everybody on the internet site. I said, this is what 
the difference is. So the difference here is one and a half volts. If this is 1.5 and this is 1.5, that's three volts. By the time it goes to this battery, the difference in potential is 1.5 volts. Because the one on the right is one and a half volts? Yes. Okay. One and a half. Okay. But the thing is, what's your load? You see, you can put a load here. You can put some kind of weight here. So you have to calculate this load here to work with what you have as potential. Without calculating the exact load, you're never going to charge the batteries. You're going to deplete the batteries. And no, you can't put a capacitor in place of this battery. It's not the same thing. Okay? This is... This is what Tom Beard and I refer to differentials and potential. And so, no, you cannot put a capacitor here. And no, you cannot put a capacitor here. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to deplete itself and it's going to stop working. All right? 